Go as the pilgrim and seek out danger. Far from the comforts and the well-lit avenues of life, pitch your soul against the unknown and seek comfort in the brave. Experience cold and hunger, heat and thirst, and survive to face another challenge and see another dawn. Only then will you be at peace with yourself, and able to know and say, I look down on the farthest side of the mountain, and fulfilled and understanding all, can say I have lived a full life and one of my own choice. And choice, that simple freedom, is what the Iraqi people did not have under the murderous leadership of Saddam Hussein and his two demonic sons. However, that is just my personal view, and my view is not important in this debate. Histories is. It echoes off the alleyways as you walk here. It is whispered by the ghosts of speakers past in this debating chamber as you sit here this evening. It is seeped into the very fabric of this great and oldest English-speaking university in the world as you study here, Oxford. A thousand years of history, and history, not us mere mortals, is the cornerstone of tonight's debate. And history is a discipline that lends itself to a plate that is best eaten cold. The past evokes a perspective to be viewed across the long arc of time. Merely ask you, I merely ask you to do so this evening. History is an investigation, the careful study of things that went before, not a quick-fire judgment, but a balanced, a considered view placed into the context in which decisions and actions were taken, duly reflected on and always, always over time. Now, who would have thought it possible that a dyslectic, ran a schoolboy who joined the army at 19 would make it here and in such fine company as this evening? I would not agree with everything and the points the opposition place. They are formidable speakers with siren voices, not all with siren faces, <laughs> but who are prepared to stand by their beliefs, be they right or be they wrong. I respect that. For me, I'm just a simple soldier, no spokesman, not too bright, a face for radio, and I'm all probably hopelessly ill-prepared to challenge this proposition that the House believes that history, history will regret the Iraq war. But I do so tonight, for it is my belief that when Iraq is judged by the long arc of history and not your own, you just may reconsider. Vietnam endured decades of colonial abuse, decades of violent conflict with well over three million dead, and decades of appalling communist leadership. Its future GDP is predicted to surpass Norway, Singapore, and Portugal by 2050. And it may be the fastest growing of the world's economies by 2025. And that turnaround in a blink, a blink of an Oxford historical eye. For as I said, it is history that we ask to be judged here. So, to the cradle of civilization Iraq, for whom does the bell toll? A lost chance because we tried, or a life of, of inescapable hopelessness because we did not. This is the heart of the proposition. To the past, I regret unequivocally and without recourse to the tragic loss of life of some 199,000 souls, <laughs> civilians and combatants since 2003 in Iraq, and you and history should judge me harshly. I deeply regret Iraq's lost opportunity when in 2010 it had not a perfect, as T.E. Lawrence would have articled, Arab adequate, but the choice. It was Iraq's and theirs alone under Prime Minister al-Maliki and the democratically elected parliament of the day to choose a brighter future for all its people, and I truly regret 
that it was thrown away, and so you should not be too kind to him or them either. But it is with the greatest regret that I recall the forgotten half a million or more Iraqi citizens who were dragged from their homes, families and friends, and systematically tortured, raped and murdered under Saddam Hussein. I regret, and on his shoulders and his alone, the malicious and unwarranted eight-year war on Iran in the 1980s, when somewhere between half to one and a quarter million civilians and combatants died. I regret the 30 to 35,000 Kuwaiti civilians, coalition members, and Iraqi combatants that died in having to retake Kuwait in the 1991 after Saddam's second reckless adventure of war with his neighbors. And on all three of these accounts, historical accounts, I regret, I regret the cumulative loss of hope, the staggering numerical loss of life, and most of all, the loss of a rich and buoyant nation to social, economic, and psychological collapse. And you and history should judge him significantly harsher. But I do not regret for one moment the death of Saddam's future legacy to Iraq and what would have been its inevitable and tragic total collapse, that of his two psychopathic and deranged sons in 2003, nor do I regret for one moment of hanging him in 2006. His bloody part played over 23 years is Iraq's regret and downfall and central to any historical judgment. For today, I regret that so many people look for simple answers to complex human conflict, especially in the Middle East. If you believe that today's crisis, ISIL, was born in 2003, then feel free to spend the last few minutes checking your social media networks and vote for the motion. But if you have read Said Qutb's Milestones or his more eloquent 1953 work, Social Justice in Islam, then you will realize that the radical Islam has been on the march since the 1920s and its conclusion is that it is not what we do, but who we are that is the point of controversy. Your dress, your taste in music, your liberal attitudes and your behavior, put simply, your, our way of life has been selected these last 100, 100 years for deletion by dictatorial and absolute rule. Today that radical threat is in the open. The foot soldiers of ISIL march with the same manic tread as the stormtroopers of Nazi Germany and you and I can see it for what it is. If unattended, it will terminate your and your children's way of life. To the future, Iraq deserved better. I do not deny that. But it did not deserve to be left. I regret not having done better, but I would regret more deeply and shamelessly as I did in Rwanda, as we watched 800,000 innocents butchered to death as one of those who could have had done something and we did nothing, and do not be misled by the weakness of Parliament today to intervene or engage early, because it still lays within their authority. So I, like Captain Robert Falcon Scott, would subscribe to his epitaph that we are weak, but for my own sake I do not regret this journey. Iraq has been a most difficult and painful episode, I admit, but it is not yet over, and its history is yet to be written. This house should not take some moral comfort and find excuse in singing, singling out Iraq war in 2003 as a snapshot in time as its cause of regret. History is littered with them. Iraq has today, as they had in 2010, a choice to set itself on a better course untrammeled by dictatorial rule, and that is an emerald simply beyond price, not without cost, but one history will not regret, and so you should regret, reject this motion. Thank you.